Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month. We have an absolutely jam-packed show. This time around, Robin has a set of gravel wheels. Kai has brought along his new action camera from DJI. He's really excited about it. Simon has a pair of super lightweight Bont shoes. I've got a Castelli jacket I've been using far too much lately. And there's a little bike here too. But before we dive in, remember to like and subscribe. Last month, I was delighted to pick up these beautiful carbon gravel wheels from WTB. They are the CZR i23 carbon gravel wheel set. And while they aren't strictly new, and if you're an avid watcher, you might have seen them in a shoot we did earlier in the summer, they are something Bike Radar hasn't tested before. With a few long rides planned over the summer, I've been building a lightweight bike packing bike with my long-termer, the Sonda Camino. The Sonda is a titanium gravel bike but it came with quite heavy alloy wheels, so I was looking to update it to something a little bit more lightweight. The WTB CZR wheel set is built from carbon fiber and is aimed at making a pair of lightweight wheels that still offer compliance over rocky terrain. Because I am planning on riding a loaded bike on rocky terrain, I was particularly interested in having a pair of wheels that are very durable. Luckily, the CZRs feature additional carbon at each spoke bed, and that improves overall rim strength and durability while also minimizing weight in areas where less strength and therefore less material is needed. These spokes are forged into a pillar shape, aimed at making the wheel more aerodynamic. Of course, I'm gonna put fork packs onto the bike, so this forfeits any of the aero benefits that I might have been getting from that. However, if I do take the Camino on a day race, this will be a great advantage. This wheel set I have with me right here comes with a SRAM XD Freehub Ratchet System that has five pools of engagement. It alternates between two groups of three pools each to provide quick engagement, which should also make the free hub a bit more durable over long periods of use. All of this adds up to a front wheel that weighs 650 grams and a rear wheel that weighs 776 grams. 1,400 grams for a wheel set isn't a world leading weight, but it is much lighter than your average alloy wheels. For contrast, the wheels I'll be swapping the CZRs out for weigh in 2 kg, so that is a significant weight saving with these carbon wheels. They cost $1,599 for the set, although prices do vary by free hub, through axle size and number of spokes. So what do you think? Will you take these wheels on your next adventure? I'll put them on my Sonda Camino and I'll let you know how they fare. Now we're going to go to Simon with his incredibly fancy road shoes. The Bont Vapor 2023 is the Australian brand's latest flagship road cycling shoe. It continues with Bont's signature anatomic shape and an ultra-stiff, heat-moldable carbon sole. Compared to previous models though, Bont has focused on improving the out-of-the-box comfort. Now traditionally, Bont shoes have been paired with a super-stiff carbon sole with relatively spartan uppers which have helped keep weight to a minimum. As a result though, anything less than a near perfect fit could often result in discomfort. To combat this, Bont's high-end carbon soles have always been heat moldable, meaning you can put them in an oven to soften the resin and attempt to work out any hot spots or stress points before the carbon sets again. It is fair to say though that while this approach worked well for many, myself and other bike radar testers included, it didn't always work for everyone. Given this, Bont has refined the shape of the shoe and put an increased focus on softening and padding the uppers. And the result is a shoe which feels far more malleable on top and it's a marked difference to older Bont models that I own such as the Vapor Classic or the Zero Plus. So while I've typically always heat molded Bont cycling shoes before installing cleats, in this instance I'll be testing them as they've arrived first and then only heat molding them if I have any issues. And funnily enough, shoe stiffness is actually a topic we've made a whole video on. It's often assumed that higher stiffness means greater power transfer to the pedals, for example, but the results of a scientific study and a little bit of our own testing might surprise you. So, if you want to watch that one, we've put a link in the video description below. In terms of other changes to the Vapor 2023, Bont has simplified the closure system with a pair of Boa Li2 dials taking care of lace tension. Now as usual, these are easy to use while riding, offer dual direction micro adjustments and can be popped up to release the tension entirely for speedy removal. And in terms of weight, this pair of size EU45 shoes comes in at 442 grams, which is just over 40 grams less than the Bont Vapor S shoes we tested in 2021. 
There are lighter road cycling shoes available, of course, but that 442 grams compares favorably to Vapor's high-end competitors, such as the Specialized S-Works Torch and Shimano's latest S-Fire RC903. And in terms of price, these come in at just under £370 or $450. That's obviously not cheap, but it is also fair to say that it's not out of step with the rest of the market. Specialized S-Works Torch shoes, for example, cost £385 or $450, while Shimano's S-Fire RC903 shoes cost £350 or $450. And usually for such an expensive shoe though, there are only two slightly uninspiring colour options available for the Vapor 2023, all white or all black. Now obviously there's nothing wrong with white or black, but I do think that some riders might be sad there isn't anything more expressive available. That said, it is possible to customise the boa dials with different coloured versions, but at £47 a pair, you're adding another £94 to the total price to do this, as you would need two sets to fully customise a pair of shoes. And while previous Bont shoes came with exceptionally basic inner soles, Bont has finally addressed this criticism by partnering with Cobra 9, an Australian manufacturer of custom cycling insoles. The new insoles pair a carbon core with dual density EVA foam and are designed to improve arch support and comfort while minimising stack height. Overall, they're a very welcome improvement as I typically always swapped out stock Bont inner soles for Shimano ones right away, but that no longer feels necessary. If you want more arch support that comes as standard, differing versions of the Vapor inner soles are available separately for £79 or $100. And Bond also offers the option to get custom inner soles molded to your feet, but at £280 or another $349, that's not a cheap service either. Obviously, fully custom parts are always going to be fairly pricey though, so I'm sure no one is too surprised about that. But what do you think though? Would you drop £370 or $450 on a pair of cycling shoes? Let us know in the comments below. Not gonna lie, I didn't want to be using this for the entirety of July and most of August, but here we are. The British summer has been a wet one, so I've been using Costelli's Slicker Pro Jacket. While you might have thought that this was a shake dry product from Gore, it isn't. Castelli was forced to find a new wonder material after Gore had to stop making its shake dry material due to the ban on PFCs. A PFC is a per or polyfluorinated compound. If you didn't know, the world is moving away from fluorinated polymers and this affects my favorite rain jacket too. The fabric that you see here is Castelli's PFC free micro shell two layer 50 gram per meter square fabric and it is similar though not identical to gauze shape dry material. Firstly it is proper waterproof and very breathable I can attest to that. Castelli uses a PU coating which it says is environmentally friendly. Now the frequent and heavy downpours that we've been getting meant that I've been unwilling to take the jacket off between showers. So having protection from the rain and breathability that is still really, really good is very welcome. But the material is thicker. It is marginal, but it makes the jacket just slightly heavier if you care about weight while riding in the rain. It's also a little harder to roll up and stow in your back pocket. There is one feature that I love. The jacket has pockets. Two big ones sit on the back of the jersey and they've been very handy on rainy days as you don't have to hike the jacket up to get to the pockets underneath. And before you ask, yes, they have drainage holes. There are also tape seams, a waterproof zipper and stretch panels down the sides to aid fit. Time to go to Kai now, who's got a brand new camera. I'm back again with another action camera, but this time it's coming from DJI. Now, DJI may be better known for their drones, but they released their first action camera in 2019, and this is the latest iteration, the Action 4. Inside is a 1 by 1.3 inch sensor, which is impressive for a camera this size, and should result in better image quality, especially in low light conditions. It's also a bigger sensor than DJI's cheaper Action 3, and its main competitor, GoPro's Hero 11, both of which have smaller 1 by 1.7 inch sensors. It can shoot a maximum resolution of 4K up to 120 FPS. However, what caught my eye more is the ability to shoot 10-bit color in the D-Log-M color mode. 
I'll be interested to see how well the colours can be tweaked during post-production when shooting in this mode. There's a claim battery life of two and a half hours and it can be recharged to 80% in just 18 minutes with the included charger. Impressive. An issue found with older generations of action cameras is very reduced battery life in cold weather conditions. The Action 4 features a freeze-resistant battery, as they call it, which should provide improved usage in these conditions, for example, if you're skiing or snowboarding. Externally, there's dual screens with a larger touchscreen on the back and a smaller screen on the front. One feature to note is the ability to use the power button to quickly switch between custom recording modes, which sounds like peak efficiency to me. I'm also glad to see the Action 4 does feature an SD card slot, something we didn't see on the Insta360. In terms of mounting, there's a wide range of options, such as a handlebar mount, wrist strap, and even a bike seat mount, which all use this satisfying magnetic system. I'll be interested to see the audio quality from this camera, as it features three built-in microphones for omnidirectional sound. And on top of this, the Action 4 is compatible with DJI mics, which gives you a whole host of different audio possibilities. In terms of price, it comes in at £379, $399, or €429. Euros with a variety of bundles available at additional costs. We're looking forward to taking this camera out on our own shoots, see how it holds up. And if you're interested in seeing a comparison between the latest action camera offerings, then let us know down in the comments. All right, here's what you've been waiting for. It's the SL8. Now Specialized released this a little bit early on the day of the Men's World Road Race Championships, and it came with a lot of tech claims. The new bike features an elongated head tube called the Speed Sniffer. The result is that the SLA is claimed to be 16.6 .6 watts faster at 45 kilometers per hour than the Venge, which was the fastest bike that they'd ever made, apparently. The speed sniffing head tube presents a sharper, more efficient profile to the wind. The forward extending design is said to improve aero performance while keeping the steerer in the same place relative to the previous bike. Now the head tube is topped with the new Roval Rapide integrated cockpit, which is said to save around 4 watts compared to the old two-piece design used on the SL7. Now that two-piece system can still be fitted, and if you get anything apart from the S-Works bike, that's what you'll be getting. It's also quite a bit lighter according to Specialized. Apparently, the SL8 took some learnings from the Athos, because you know, it's the best bike ever. And I'm not biased at all when I say that. Specialized says that the non-leading edge areas of the bike, that's the down tube, seat tube, seat post and seat stays, are all purposefully designed to improve the bike's speed in the real world. Essentially, these tubes are more rounded, which the brand says makes them lighter and enables them to bear the load of the rider and the forces produced more efficiently. Speaking of weight, the SL8 frame set is down to a claimed 685 grams. This is Ash's test bike, which is a size 56 centimeter, 12 grand Jura Ace build. So obviously one of the lighter models. Like the SL7, tire clearance remains at 32 millimeters, while the bike continues to use a BSA threaded bottom bracket. What do you think about it? It looks a little gopping to me, but do you agree? Let me know in the comments below. Well, remember to like and subscribe if you like this video and want to see more from us. And if you want to see even more new bike content, there's a Canyon Endurace video just there.